In part one, we discussed the power mod situation and censorship on Reddit and why it matters. In this video, we'll dive a little bit deeper into the controversies surrounding the power mods and lesser known mods too. If you haven't seen part one, I would recommend checking that out before watching this video just because it gives you some context. I had a couple of comments in the first video saying it was a little bit hard to hear me, so hence the microphone's down here. Um, if you'd let me know if it's any better in this one and if not, I'll try and do something else to sort it. But thanks to those who pointed it out for the feedback. Most criticism of the so-called power mods and even the lesser known mods stems from them karma whoring or reposting or generally abusing their position. For example, removing comments and posts that don't break any rules, not only from the subreddit that they posted in, but from other subreddits that whatever moderator moderates. You may remember Sixy mentioned in part one, the moderator who banned Rootin Tootin Putin from over 40 subreddits because of their post exposing the list of moderators that control many subreddits. And they actually deleted their account after all this went down. I'm not sure if it was because they had something to hide or just because they were getting doxxed or getting death threats, it's quite hard to say. But their account was nine years old and like I said in the last video, it's not the first time that this list has done its rounds, so I wonder what, what changed this time. As far as I'm aware, Sixy hasn't done anything too scandalous apart from just basic mod abuse, which at this point doesn't even shock me anymore to be honest, um, such as what he did to Rootin Tootin Putin. He has also tried to repost posts that other people have posted and tried to pass them off as his own, trying to delete the evidence after. So a, a couple of minor things that certainly shouldn't be condoned, but nothing too crazy. As far as other power mods go, I don't want to make this video too crazy long, so I'm just going to kind of speed through a list of some accusations against them. Merario1 was one of three mods who took over r slash reddit moment and completely transformed it, deleting most of the comments prior to the takeover. To be fair, I don't actually know for sure what this subreddit was exactly before the takeover, so it might have been justified for all I know. According to Morari, it was, quote, on the verge of being actioned against by site admins, and he attempted to solve the problem by making it a wholesome sub, which users weren't happy about, leading him to apologise. He has also been accused of abusing his position, overreacting to users' fair criticism by banning them. Some users feel that Awkward the Turtle is racist, as he has a habit of making posts and comments against white people, now, as you know, I'm white and I can take a joke, so I probably won't be offended if someone made a joke about me being white, but I guess Turtle just seems to make comments for the sake of it, and many users have criticised him for this. He certainly seems to overreact in some instances and can be pretty unnecessarily rude. Other criticisms involve general mod abuse. I think Carminaut has been inactive for a while now, so I'm not sure if they've left Reddit altogether or just switched accounts, but they supposedly had many alternate accounts leading to jokes such as everyone but you is Carminaut. They were called out for voter manipulation in the past. Also made the controversial decision to remove Bad Luck Brian's Ask Me Anything because it wasn't an event or particularly unique, as they said. They received nearly 9,000 downvotes when explaining this situation, with people pointing out that they had previously made a post titled, I am a well-known Redditor, Ask Me Anything. It's rumoured that these two accounts are either run by the same people or by two close friends. Both are apparently subpar mods that seem to be aware in no time if they've been called out for something, but there's no sign of them when they're needed in the subreddits they moderate. Waggler is a self-professed troll and has been accused of racism. Noah tried to stir the pot by sending users in r slash hold my feeding tube who had mentioned in comments that they were white, messages that looked like ban messages, falsely leading people to believe that they'd been banned because they were white. Which is a ridiculous thing to do just to kind of stir the pot it seems, but they said they did this for karma on r slash watch reddit die. Generally, it seems quite common for popular moderators to use their fame to gain access to other subreddits. For example, Sixy could probably have requested to be moderator of nearly any subreddit and got in no questions asked. Also seems quite common for moderators to trade favours to become moderators in certain subreddits. I mentioned in part one that some of the posts in subreddits such as watch reddit die had been removed for obvious reasons. They were wildly offensive. 
But it has been suggested that the power mods, maybe even the admins, plant alt-right accounts in these subreddits so they have a reason to ban them. If it seems that there is a large enough proportion of users on a subreddit that are racist or homophobic, etc., that subreddit can then pretty much be labelled as alt-right, and then not only will the average person avoid it after hearing about it and therefore not be aware of the censorship issues, but it also gives admins an excuse to ban it, even if its core values are solely relating to unfair Reddit censorship. I wouldn't be surprised if it's only a matter of time until subreddits like these start disappearing. There is no way I couldn't include Galoboob in this video. Despite him not even making the top 10 list of moderators that control the most subreddits, he's probably one of the most well-known users, not only within Reddit, but outside of the platform as well. He does moderate some popular subreddits such as Today I Fucked Up, What Could Go Wrong and Oddly Satisfying. He does seem a bit like Marmite, like most users on Reddit seem to either love him or hate him. Most of the criticism that he receives stems from him karma whoring or reposting posts, which he is undeniably guilty of, but some people argue that this isn't necessarily a bad thing. Now obviously if you were going to post a picture of a painting and try to pass it off as your own, that's wrong. But outside of this kind of specific situation, there is an argument to be made that Gallo just posts posts that he found on the internet that are cool things that you might not have otherwise seen. As long as he's not trying to pass them off as his own, I don't think it's a huge problem. Now this guy probably holds the record for the Reddit user with most deleted posts. Even with Wayback Machine, it was pretty hard to fully research all the controversies he's been involved in and accused of, because he seems to have a habit of not only deleting his own posts that could later be used against him, but of any criticism at all that appears in not only the subreddits he moderates, but quite suspiciously ones that he's not even involved in, supposedly, leading many people to believe that he might be in with many other moderators and that they too also delete posts that are criticising Gallo. He also just seems to delete his own posts that don't get many upvotes and seems to repost them at a later date, I'm guessing with hopes that it's going to be more popular at certain times. He has been known to ban people who make negative comments about him on the subreddits he moderates but also seems to have the power to get comments deleted or users banned pretty swiftly by other mods for making comments against him. People were banned in 2017 for calling him out for voter manipulation on pics. Many people suspect he uses alt accounts to defend himself. There was once a subreddit, Galoboob did me wrong, which contained examples of his alleged mod abuse. Somehow Galoboob took over this subreddit, restricted it and deleted everything. This leads some people to believe that he is in with the admins. I mean, some people have been banned for a lot less than he has done in the past and it does seem a little bit suspicious really. Him deleting posts doesn't necessarily always mean he has something to hide, he may just be the kind of person that can't take criticism and would rather just delete things rather than take responsibility to explain them or be accountable for his actions. It's interesting to note that Gallo has actually had paid jobs as a result of his popularity on Reddit. He used to work as a landscape architect, then landed himself a job as a social media executive at Lad Bible. Because he is somewhat a known public figure, it does kind of make sense that he'd want to delete things that might make him look bad or might make people dislike him. I mean, if you work for a company, you do to some extent represent that company. So it'd definitely be bad for his career if everyone disliked him for whatever reason. Some people believe that the same person is behind Gallo Boob's account as well as Sixy and Awkward the Turtle. Mostly just because there seems to be trends between people getting banned from subreddits that all three of those moderators moderate. I do think this is pretty unlikely as Gallo Boob posts a lot. If it was one person behind those three accounts, they'd need a lot of spare time on their hands. Some people believe that there are multiple people behind Gallo Boob or that Gallo Boob, Turtle and Sixy are all run by companies. This reddit comment sums the whole conspiracy up pretty well and it's quite an interesting thing to consider. There have been accusations against Galoboob regarding him being paid to advertise on reddit. There was the time he posted the new Netflix logo animation to r slash oddly satisfying which resulted in many people theorising he'd been paid to promote Netflix. Unsurprisingly, any and all comments suggesting this were removed by the moderators, basically by Gallo, a moderator of that subreddit. There was even a comment that only pointed out how oddly satisfying was the wrong sub for this post that was removed by moderators. He did actually post a comment in response to the accusations, 
He said the post had been locked because people weren't following the keep comments section civil and friendly rule, though none of the comments I saw were uncivil or unfriendly. They just questioned the possibility that Gellar may have been paid to advertise for Netflix. The part about not flaming anyone before you have actual proof, I can't argue against, but comments that weren't even doing this were removed also. He also posted a second comment, which was almost the exact same, but a bit different. I'm not going to say he compared the two per se, but should he have even been mentioned in the issue of sexual harassment in Hollywood in a comment where he's trying to show he's not a shill? He was also accused of using his position on Reddit to advertise his friend's marketing company. He denied the accusations. If this were all true, it would be a huge problem. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's illegal to not disclose that you've been paid to advertise something. Now, there's not necessarily sufficient proof to call this fact, but some of it does look a bit suspicious, I guess. Another accusation I've seen floating around is that Gallo sent nudes to a minor. I mean, from what I can tell, this isn't strictly true. In 2015, user DoubleMintDave79 posted various screenshots of messages between himself and Gallo after he had called Gallo out for reposting. At this point, for some unknown reason, Gallo ended up sending Dave nudes, which Dave made public. All this somehow led to Gallo being temporarily shadow banned. But then information came out to suggest that Dave had actually been harassing Gallo before he finally snapped. I mean, the messages certainly seemed a bit selective and seemed to lack context. The nude was a full body photo of Gallo, but he was using his hands to cover his bits. After Gallo sent those photos, Dave claimed to be underage, but was then outed as a liar. As far as I'm aware, Gallo was not under the impression that Dave was a minor when he sent those photos. So it's not like this is evidence of him being a pedo or anything like some people have tried to claim. But it does go to show that you maybe shouldn't send unsolicited photos of that kind to anyone that you don't know on the internet. I mentioned before that some people believe that Gallo is in with the admins. There's not necessarily any evidence for this, but it is quite interesting how many people have been banned from the site for much less than what Gallo has done. Of course he was temporarily shadow banned after the Double Mint Dave incident, but this didn't really affect him at all in the long run, and it would serve quite conveniently as a red herring or a Reddit, herring, muffins are terrible, if the admins really did favour him for some reason. There's no denying it'd be a pretty effective system for censoring, but I can't really find any indisputable evidence that proves this. Aside from power mods, there have been controversies surrounding lesser known mods or mods of less popular subreddits. Here are a few examples. In 2012, user Soccer used r slash reddit request a subreddit where you can request to be a moderator of a subreddit that is either abandoned or the moderators aren't active anymore to request to become a moderator of r slash xkcd, a subreddit dedicated to the popular webcomic by Randall Monroe. Soccer had previously created many controversial subreddits such as ones dedicated to holocaust denial and general anti-semitism. It became clear that Soccer had only acquired xkcd to promote his radical agenda. He began linking his other subreddits in the sidebar that were completely irrelevant to this subreddit. When users questioned this, they were removed and banned from the subreddit. In order to keep control of subreddits, you need to post at least once every two months, otherwise someone can make a request on reddit request and gain control of that subreddit. Soccer barely posted at all, but he maintained his position by just posting enough to prevent anyone else taking over the subreddit. I'll link a good write-up in the description if you want to know the full story of what happened, but basically, user the Ting guy managed to infiltrate the subreddit, accidentally got promoted above the other mods, so when Soccer failed to post for two months, he managed to post a request to Reddit request to become the top moderator. This was approved, and they managed to reverse the damage done by Soccer and restore the subreddit to its original state. User Luke-JR currently only moderator of a few pretty small subreddits such as ones relating to Bitcoin, was once the sole moderator of CPS, a subreddit for discussion around child protective services in the US. He was extremely against the American agency and therefore was unable to be impartial as a moderator. He was outed for making many inflammatory and violent remarks. Not sure what happened exactly, but he no longer moderates that sub, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> Dr. Dreamtime, moderator of a few subreddits including r slash justice served and r slash took too much, is an open anti-vaxxer. 
They've also been accused of being racist after removing posts and banning users for posts relating to racism against black people and anti-Trump posts. The list goes on and on. There are numerous moderators who have made morally questionable comments and actions. A quick search on Reddit reveals thousands of these. So many people have been unfairly banned from certain subreddits or the entire site in general, while many moderators get away with a lot more and seem to suffer no consequences. We already discussed the ramifications of power mods and censorship etc in the last video, so I won't waste time going back over that. But I thought it could be interesting to gain insight from an actual power mod. User Blank Check, a power mod who moderates many popular subreddits including r slash music, r slash memes and r slash explain like I'm five, agreed to answer a few of my questions. Most mods are volunteers doing their best. Some of them just end up drawing negative attention to themselves in doing that. Even the ones that seem bad are trying to do what they think is right. I always find that when you assume bad intentions from anyone, the vast majority of the time you'll be wrong with mods, users, anyone. I used to be pretty anti-power mod before I became one, so I understand the point of view. I was very disappointed to find out that there isn't actually a mod mafia controlling all of Reddit from the shadows. Do you think that some moderators might be in with admins though, and can maybe get away with more than the average user would? Well a lot of the admins used to be mods, so they can't really be expected to just end all the friendships they made with other mods, they're all very professional about it though, and power mods have been permanently suspended or otherwise punished before, so I wouldn't say they're untouchable or anything. Have you ever been aware of anything unprofessional relating to that? For example, any times where a mod may have certain privileges as a result of their friendship with admins? Definitely not. It would be a huge scandal if that happened. What are your thoughts on the whole Rootin Tootin Putin situation? Why did he get banned from the whole site and do you think it was deserved? Since I'm not able to find the actual comment he was suspended for, I can't say for sure whether it was justified. People frequently delete comments that they're suspended for in a panic. I don't think he was suspended just for posting that power mods are bad. Can you think of any controversies or scandals that any of the power mods have been involved in? Obviously there's plenty of drama that happens between mods, but I can't really give specifics about any of that. Anything else you'd already be able to find. Are you able to give any information about any power mods that have been banned from the site? You don't have to name them if that helps. Mostly they would get suspended for normal stuff. The admins are out of control with suspensions right now and the slightest hostility could result in one. Why do you think that is? It's pissing a lot of people off. Aren't they eventually just going to lose users? An insignificant amount, if any. Most users will never leave Reddit. As for why, it's for money of course. They want to be more palatable to advertisers. Have any companies ever approached you to ask if you'd promote them, or products, etc on Reddit? Never, and I don't know anyone who that's happened to either. Can you think of any examples of any power mods, again don't have to name names if you don't want to, actually abusing their position beyond just doing what they think is right and people disagreeing? Not off the top of my head, most things that look like mod abuse from the outside are mistakes at worst. Why do you moderate so many subreddits as opposed to just a couple relating to your personal interests? Also, how time consuming is it? It's hard to explain, I guess I just find it fun. It's pretty time consuming a lot of the time, but that just means I always have something to do. In conclusion, it seems apparent that there are a lot of moderators who seem to abuse their power or unfairly ban people etc. But I think the vast majority are genuinely just volunteers who want to make Reddit a better place, or just people who enjoy moderating their own personal subreddits. Everyone makes mistakes at some point and we all learn and grow over time, but unfortunately Reddit and the internet in general is somewhere where mistakes are not quickly forgotten. You can never really delete a mistake from the internet, and sometimes this isn't a bad thing, I mean some actions are unforgivable. But I think anyone would be lying if they said they'd never made a comment that was taken the wrong way or held a view that they later believed was wrong or acted too hastily in a situation and made the wrong decision. Because Reddit has infinitely more volunteers than paid staff, 
it's inevitable that some mod abuse will slip through the cracks and go unnoticed by admins. Maybe in some situations it might even be noticed, but just face no consequences for whatever reason. I do think some people just try and find a reason to hate power mods because they're power mods, and with some obviously the dislike is justified. But providing someone isn't breaking any rules, providing someone's not just banning people because they don't agree with them and they're not generally abusing the power, maybe some people just enjoy moderating a lot of subreddits. There's nothing inherently wrong with spending a lot of time on Reddit and volunteering your time to do what you think is going to make the site a better place. I said this in the last video but I'll say it again, please do not harass or dox or send hate to any of these moderators or anyone mentioned in the video. Do your own research, discuss, speculate, but don't send death threats to people. It's not going to solve anything and you'll just get banned from Reddit. It is important to take a lot of what you see on the internet with a pinch of salt. A lot of it's just he said, she said, and people have agendas, people lie, or people just misremember. Not everything that you read on Reddit is going to be true. Not everyone that says this moderator did this is going to be correct with that. And in many cases, someone's online persona is literally just that, a persona. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please consider liking and subscribing, and feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. I really appreciated the comments on the last video and enjoyed reading through them, it was interesting to know everyone's opinions. I've also just hit 100 subscribers, so thank you so much to everyone who's subscribed, I really appreciate that. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next Thursday in a new video.